So good morning everyone. I am Surbhi, your host this beautiful morning and I welcome you all to the inaugural edition of Programmatic Asia Symposium hosted by agency reporter, powered by Double Verify and co-powered by Lemma and in association with Media Smart and MIQ. Well, programmatic advertising has revolutionized the way we buy and sell digital advertising. It has transformed the way marketers and agencies reach their target audiences, enabling them to deliver highly targeted and personalized ad scale. However, this dynamic landscape is constantly evolving and new challenges continue to emerge. Programmatic Asia Symposium today has brought together industry leaders, technology experts and advertising professionals to share their experiences and insights on navigating the challenges and opportunities presented by programmatic advertising. Our aim is to help our audience navigate the complexities of programmatic advertising and stay ahead of the curve in this rapidly changing landscape. We hope you all are set for a day full of learning, networking and inspiration as we explore the latest trends and strategies in programmatic advertising. Our first panel discussion is on the topic Nailing the Fundamentals, Evaluating Brand Values and Powering Programmatic Media Performance. Well, the digital media landscape has, rapid, has radically changed in just a few years as the content consumption habits of consumers continue to shift, the ad tech industry is expected to witness strong headwinds in 2023. With budgets under scrutiny, we aim to discuss the current scenario of programmatic advertising, how marketers are focusing on retaining brand values along with focusing on efficient and performance-based media investments and much more. I would like to welcome our moderator for the session. Please welcome him with a round of applause, Mr. Siddharth Dabade, Managing Director, India Sark and China MIQ. With this, I would also like to welcome all our panelists for this session. Please welcome Atika Ehsan Ansari, Media and Digital Head, Perno Ricard India. Please welcome. Come on, show some more energy. And please welcome Jethi Haryani, Business Director, Double Verify. Let's welcome her with a round of applause. And also please welcome Prasad Pimple, Executive Vice President and Head Digital Business Unit, Kotak Life. Also welcome Smita Salgaukar, Country Manager, Data and Digital Media, Media Monks. Welcome all our speakers and over to the moderator. Thank you. Great. Okay. I think a bit early for Mumbai, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. That's a good turnout. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, so I think we have a, uh, we don't have a very easy uh, topic, uh, right? Programmatic. Uh, it's relatively new in India, uh, I would say, uh, but uh, I think the growth has been very big. Uh, it's also probably an evolution of the entire ecosystem, right? So uh, I remember from the olden digital days, uh, and now digital has become old, uh, where you know, <laughs> uh, there's so much of search and social happening, and then uh, you know the ecosystem is getting bigger. A lot of more players are coming <coughs> in as well. And we have, we have started looking like other markets where there are more options on digital and so on as well. And there are also, most importantly, new channels coming in, right? And uh, what I would say is that uh, earlier it was very publisher-led or topic-led kind of uh, marketing and campaigns. Now we are looking at more and more audience kind of logic as well, right? So that's, that's a change which we have been seeing in the market. Uh, so probably the first question to Atika. Uh, Pandemic played a very important role in, you know, changing a lot of digital landscape. So, what adjustments have been made by advertisers, uh, especially for programmatic, uh, in this time period? Yeah. yeah. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I think the pandemic uh, did play a very important role. Uh, resources 
were constrained, right? Most companies didn't know where we were headed with the pandemic, when there would be budget cuts. And in terms of consumers, uh, we did see consumers moving towards a very, very specific platforms and doing you know, specific things. Like I think there was a whole burst of Instagram and Dalgona coffee trends and more trends and more trends. I think what the pandemic forced us as advertisers to do was to look at where the consumer is because it was easier to reach them where they are rather than saying, oh my God, this is my platform. This is what I'd like to do and they need to come there. And I think it did impact programmatic because like you were saying, at that point in time, I think 2019, early 2020, uh, programmatic advertising was so led by platforms, so led by technology. Uh, there were, of course, some of us who were doing audience targeting as well. But it kind of forced us to sit back and say, okay, I need to be on Instagram and Meta. And because we come from, I come from a category that is only talking about experiences, right? I come from alcohol. I've, I'm working for Perno. I worked for Diageo at that point. Uh, for us, it was important to reach to our consumers and say, hey, it's very difficult, looks gloomy, but still have a good time. And uh, Meta obviously got prioritized. But the other thing was that there was there's so much clutter and that wasn't the only thing people were consuming. So for us at that point in time, programmatic took a different shift uh, where we said that uh, we will look at cohort-based advertising, people who are interested in having a good time, people who are interested in relaxing, are there any cohorts that we can form on the various platforms available, whether it was Google, CTV was just coming up then, but we were seeing a whole trend of, you know, people caught cutting and just sitting and viewing so much television. So we like looked at audience uh, targeting, cohort based targeting, but very importantly, we also, that was a time where we also white listed platforms, white listed content saying, I sell a Tanqueray or I sell uh, monkey 47 and I need consumers who are looking for mixability who are looking for these kind of content I'm going to whitelist those channels I'm going to do cohort based advertising in tandem with something else in tandem with meta in tandem with CTV in tandem with something else to make sure I ultimately reach the audience my ads have viewability and I'm driving brand recall because as a category I'm not allowed to talk about my product I'm talking about an extension. So for us, I think the pandemic make us look very, very hard at our investments across. Uh, programmatic, I think we really looked at what was working for us. We looked at from a consumer point of view, that is where we shifted from saying, okay, I don't need to look at it from just the platform point of view or technology point of view. What the consumer is, what are they doing? And how can I reach out to them? How can I tell them my story? How can I make them my advocates? I think that's what happened to us. That's, that's it. I think I spoke a lot. <laughs> I think so. So this was great. And probably just a quick follow-up question on this is that, like, how, uh, how, like what's, uh, how, how much is programmatic valuable for you in your marketing campaigns? Is it really uh, that important? Or is it like, you know, more like an add-on which you are doing uh, and, and you know obviously it depends on brand strategy and you know what is working for you so yeah, yeah. so um, like as a category we are not allowed to sell online so programmatic is probably just doing brand building for us at least that is what we thought till the pandemic but then we started doing a lot of sessions with our brand ambassadors we started doing a lot of conversations about setting up your evening right and at that point pro programmatic did help because it helped in driving sign-ups, it helped in driving people to come to our channel and say, okay, I want to be through this. So I think programmatic definitely helps performance-based outcomes, but even for categories that are not selling, it does help you get audiences together for sign-ups, for you know, making sure that they're there. So I think it also forced us to look at what can it do for us, rather than just brand building, you know? And for sure, Alcobev category helped a lot during pandemic. Yes, uh, fortunately for us, people did end up wanting to like relax. Yeah, it did, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so uh, probably, uh, Prasad, quickly same question to you. Uh, is programmatic really important for you? Uh, and uh, how do you see it in your business? And also a few words on how did how did pandemic pan out for you and what role did programmatic play? Yeah, so uh, one thing which has happened during pandemic for a life insurance industry, 
that people actually got serious about life. Correct? Uh, people, generally what we think is, uh, we are like really immortals, nothing will happen to us. But pandemic showed that mirror to people that there are certain risks in life, that <clears throat> risk of mortality, risk of morbidity, and risk of longevity as well for that matter. People have realized that those risks. Now, when it comes to people's interest increasing in life insurance kind of a category because of a pandemic, that reflected into the search volume and everything. But what we have realized that our entire search volume was uh, following the path of the COVID cases. Mm. So whenever COVID wave one came in, the search volume increased. Mm. When it went down, again search volume went down. Co wave two, again it increased. So it was completely in sync with how customers were perceiving the risk. They were thinking short term. Mm. They were not thinking long term. They were thinking that yes, now the wave has come in, let me just get into the life insurance right now. So that was the biggest challenge as a category what we were facing. Now from programmatic perspective, uh, <clears throat> the one good part about it is segmented targeting. What you can do with programmatic is you have a brand story or you have a brand proposition which you want to communicate to each and every segment, you want to communicate it differently. Correct? Even if my product is same, the way customers are perceiving that product, someone who is younger, he will perceive term insurance for a shorter period. Till the time I have responsibilities in my life, he might not go for a longer cover and a longer sum assured. So a separate solution has to be given and a proposition has to be adjusted to it. So that particular part during pandemic, it really helped us to segment those propositions and go to the segmented target and build the awareness for term insurance further. Though it was mimicking the entire curve for COVID cases, it also helped us to bring the entire new set of consumers into life insurance, we are not even thinking about it. So that's how it worked for life insurance as a category. Great. Um, Smita, so uh, I think you know you obviously come from the practitioner's side. Uh, so a lot of evolution in the programmatic space in recent years. Uh, what are some of the key challenges from a uh, you know market and client satisfaction perspective which you see? Uh, and uh, you know how should programmatic evolve or how it has evolved to meet those challenges? That's a very, very, uh, very vast question. <laughs> um, and I'll take a decade, take us a decade back, I would say. Uh, I've been with programmatic for over a decade now, right when it was called RTB. And it was used predominantly for retargeting. Um, but I think uh, during the COVID period or the lockdown periods that we are talking about, uh, while the concepts were creeping in of programmatic, it became mainstream. It became the norm. That's what's powering digital right now. So it's no longer a channel that we would use. It's actually something which is powering our media buying practices, our audience thinking, customer-centric marketing. All of these concepts are now powered by programmatic. So having said that, one good thing that happened for the industry of programmatic <coughs> during uh, COVID is the massive adoption that happened across all uh, advertisers. That's also because the first thing to stop during COVID period was advertising, right? Everyone paused on uh, you know, showing ads everywhere and quick results were required or expected out of agency partners or partners such as us that how should we leverage what we have right now because there's no sales happening. The concepts of essentials uh, emerging very soon. And by the way, Alcobev did become <laughs> essentials. So, so from that standpoint, now we have to quickly uh, think about what we have. Uh, there's no sales happening. There's very little marketing budgets. What should we do about it? So everyone started introspecting. What data do we have? Start looking at the audiences who have historically uh, related with us. What are the trends? Uh, in this hard time where we should actually use this budget and actually diversify what we have right now to be a little more topical. Uh, I feel all of these concepts were uh, powered by programmatic because it allowed us to actually look at those concepts, you know, our own audiences and understand them a little better. Concepts like D2C, uh, wanting to reach out to consumers directly by brands, concepts like CDP, um, all of these things, hyper-segmentation, segmentation, relatability, uh, all of these things right now are being center, at the center of digital marketing today. So that's one thing uh, that I really, really strong about uh, the changes that have happened to programmatic over 
the COVID period. In terms of how it's evolving, it's it's ever evolving. It started off with, like I said, real-time bidding, just automating how ads are bought and sold, versus now getting into all sorts of concepts. All of us are leveraging it, including transparency when we talk about quality of media, to making our media dollars uh, work a little harder. Concepts like tech investments or uh, parting ways from you know direct ways of media buying in terms of being blind versus how should we choose our inventory a little better. Why? Because our audiences look in a certain manner. Their persona is a certain way. We can find more such users on certain things. So everything is way more calculated. And the efficiency that programmatic is bringing in uh, in terms of execution, in terms of uh, reaching out to these audiences effectively, collecting that data, reading it furthermore, and designing the next round of communication, all of these concepts I feel are very heavily powered by programmatic. Great. Um, Jaiti, so, um, you know, I think one of the uh, challenge which has been with programmatic for some time associated is brand safety and ad fraud and related stuff, right? So, uh, and I think, uh, Obviously, Double Verify has been focusing on this. So what's your take on these challenges? Where are we on it now? And how is it going to evolve from here? So I think first I'll just say that my takeaway from today's session already I know is that in pandemic, we were drinking our lungs out. <laughs> and we were buying insurance to save our lives, which is such an irony. <laughs> or to answer your question, Siddharth, I think um, brands have been the most vulnerable today on the digital media, right? Uh, the end user has been empowered by social media platforms. One Twitter tweet which talks about how a brand wrongly positioned their ad in a content that was not as per the guidelines immediately means that they could abandon your brand, right? Your loyalty is at stake. We ran a case study recently at Double Verify where we realized that almost 87% of the users believe that it's the brand's prerogative to ensure that ads are placed in a uh, environment which is as per the guidelines, as per the ethos. So now with spends increasing on digital programmatic automatically, uh, these media budgets are more susceptible to brand safety and fraudulent incidences. So how do you take um, overcome this challenge? This needs to happen at the very impression level itself, right? I think we most often focus on performance KPIs, but what we don't realize is quality of the impression plays a very critical role. So at the bid level itself, you have to identify your fraudulent impressions. You need to identify uh, the environment in which it's going to be served. And you need to only accordingly win those bids. And we've realized as a third party measurement platform, uh, it's very important for brands and advertisers both to be in a environment full of transparency and constantly having measurement. Today, third party uh, wall gardens constantly um, try to grade their own homework. So where we come in, we say, okay, let's create a common definition for advertisers. So tomorrow, if a planner wants to understand where they need to park their monies more, where it's more fraud free, where it's more brand safe, there has to be a common definition for it. Great, makes sense. Uh, so, um, Atika, coming back to you, um, so uh, programmatic campaigns uh, have played a role in your uh, marketing and uh, so how do you see the role of data and tech, uh, you know, uh, in programmatic campaigns mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like, you know, how do you ensure that programmatic is aligned to your marketing goals because it's not an easy channel, uh, to be honest. So just taking on from uh, what you said, I think uh, for us uh, or most advertisers, the most important thing about programmatic is having a brand safe environment. And that's the reason I was talking about shortlisting or whitelisting channels where we really want it to be on or content and such stuff. I think programmatic definitely helps you in certain ways. One of them is its ability to personalize content or uh, drive cohorts and say, okay, this is the kind of cohort that makes best sense to my brand. I can also create a safe environment and so on and so forth. But most importantly, and I'm coming, I, I may sound really old school with this, but most importantly, as uh, marketers and as media planners, we sort of, all of us go towards 
technology and data which is like really fancy but the basic thing is you need to understand is what is the role programmatic is playing in my media plan today and i'm i'm coming from that perspective for example for a very very um uh niche brand uh, or a very luxury brand by india stands it's shivas regal for that particular brand programmatic actually forms the base of awareness for me because it has the capability where i can define a set of audiences that are almost seeking those similar things in other categories so it forms the base of my campaigns and of course i layer it with data and technology to make sure that it's the right environment that i'm reaching my consumer at like she mentioned that consumers today hold us responsible to where they see us and how they see us i of course use technology to ensure that there's not a lot of invalid traffic that there's not fraudulent stuff that i end up paying for so those are the checks we end up doing and then leverage it with another medium maybe an out of home or an event or and so on and so forth but if i were to reverse it and go to a mass brand like loyal stag and a boombox event programmatic is used to sell tickets for my event so i think the most important thing as marketers is going back to the drawing board and like the session is talking about fundamentals what role does a platform play in your plan and it doesn't have to be programmatic of course programmatic has the beauty of targeting of giving you cohort based advertising of giving you a performance that no other platforms would but just establishing that role agreeing to a kpi and tracking it within that is you know something that we are very very clear about as a company we use it but it is very specific in its role because otherwise it's like the latest shiny thing right because we as marketers tend to like follow right oh this is the latest shiny thing let me run behind it let me catch it let me own it but i think having that clarity of thought that what is the role it's playing in my plan what do i expect it to do for my brand i think once you have those things very clear and a kpi attached to it it becomes easy it also makes uh, our lives easier in terms of what tech and what data capturing do we want because if i'm selling tickets ultimately i want a conversion uh, at whichever platform and if i'm looking at using it as my lead medium to build reach i am looking at awareness for my brand so i think that is very very important and programmatic is a beautiful platform but i guess establishing its role in the various brands that we have would be very very critical if i could also just add to that you said something very beautiful that it's it's when people just get into programmatic without lack of knowledge of it because there is so much that's ever evolving in it so you have to constantly keep updating yourself keep measuring it it's not a one time uh, setup so you could probably think many a times we have advertisers tell us that okay as a third party measurement platform we want to evaluate the publishers but it doesn't end there because your most publishers are ugc content so you need to always keep measuring it you have to keep optimizing it you need to understand which platform works for you which device which probably like she said it's programmatic is no more limited digital today out of home ads is something which i see the next big thing after connected tv so you need to just look at it as a medium that's making your life easier at the same time uh, it's actually on a huge uh, impression count that you are bidding on today so you have to even be more careful when you're doing it yeah and totally agree that's the beauty of programmatic right a lot of traditional mediums which we couldn't measure in real time okay. we are able to measure it today whether it's ctv whether it's digital out of home and it's it gives us the power it empowers us as marketers to evaluate whether this combination works for a particular brand or segment or not and i think that's the beauty of it to look at it from a point of view of saying these traditional mediums i couldn't measure it uh, i could not get the roi on them and today i can because i know the amount of people viewing it or taking an action with it yeah and you know i think objective is clear right if the it is awareness then it is awareness related kpis we are talking about right and then that's where you go and measure them so uh, i think similar question prasad so what role does data and tech play for you uh, when you are doing programmatic campaigns and you know uh, the whole debate of branding versus performance for programmatic right how do you see that so um, if i talk about data and tech yes it has played uh, a very important role in overall marketing ecosystem when we talk about because without uh, data if i don't capture data correctly and uh, i don't analyze it real time and after analyzing it if i don't use those insights in my campaigns real time 
then the entire uh, fun out, uh, goes out of it correct so from marketing perspective yes data and technology uh, definitely have played a very important role in fact from programmatic perspective what it has enabled is a full funnel marketing uh, earlier the challenge with uh, uh, entire funnel marketing was too many platforms into it if i am doing a separate display campaign i really don't know how many have viewed it how many have clicked it how many have actually landed onto my page after they have come to my page gis captured it i had everything but remarketing was another challenge that where exactly that same customer is going after that and how do i remarket to him was a challenge but moment this data technology and programmatic the entire ecosystem has got built at least from the display and video perspective it is enabling us to do that entire uh, top of the funnel awareness to in uh, mid funnel in market audiences to low for a lead generation to entire chase marketing when customer has given the lead because insurance is not a product which is uh, bought over the counter in one single uh, instance it takes some time so chase marketing part so entire funnel which customer is taking to purchase the product has come into the control of marketer yes there are a lot of challenges still we face uh, uh, when it comes to programmatic and uh, the kind of audiences we get but it has given a lot of power to marketer the second important task uh, question what you asked was about brand versus performance correct so when you take the approach of full funnel that uh, um, that question becomes more objective oriented than brand versus performance see because normally what happens that uh, yes most of the bfsi brands especially have become uh, roi driven and hence have become performance driven but at the same time each brand knows that the kind of convergence or kind of final output what we get from a organic visit to our website or a direct visit to our website is far more than any other campaign we do because customer has experienced our campaigns in the past they have showed some interest and now they are on their own coming to the website definitely convergence increase so every brand knows that at one end performance campaigns are important for your real uh, for your uh, near term goals which is immediate roi but if you want to build a brand and get a sustained uh, website visits a sustained customer inquiries on their own which are going to convert better than any other campaign uh, the brand building the long term um, view over programmatic uh, that will definitely come into picture now in our case how do we manage it we always keep some 15 or percent budget predominantly from the perspective of building that awareness where we don't want customer to immediately give me the returns but uh, over a period bring that uh, customer back to our website directly and then convert uh, yes it also requires lot of quality audience management because if i uh, don't get a right targeting right uh, uh, awareness at the time of top of the funnel campaign then what i'm going to get as a direct traffic will again be a audience which is not my target audience so lot of data technology uh, things have to be used to ensure that pillar part that's how i look at it great uh, i think uh, prasad you answered this uh, you know eternal question on brand versus performance in a very very good way it's a very very objective way of looking at it um, uh, smita so um, when you are looking at uh, you know the campaigns which you are doing and the clients uh, with whom you are working with so how do you see that uh meaning how how does that branding versus performance logic plays out uh, right and um, um from from that perspective uh, you know how do you see difference between say western markets and india market uh, where are we uh, in terms of looking at programmatic and what kind of kpis western markets are driving what kind of kpis we are driving here how is the comparison sure uh, being a global player um uh, we have and plus the model in which we operate uh, which is one single pnl across we work in an api fashion which is you could pick up resources out of any markets we have a very good insight into how different markets are operating right now um how i like to summarize it is we've got the hardest and the uh, most evolved questions uh, that drive the industry i would say we ask 
as evolved questions as any Western or saturated market uh, would ask. Um, where we have a challenge is always on, uh, there is no, there is little lack of patience for, uh, you know, or to run the proof of concept. There's a little, uh, there's always a pressed uh, uh, issue. India is in a hurry. Well, yes, we are a servicing heavy market uh, with two advertisers over here on the panel, I would still say so. We are a, a very, very uh, service driven market. Um, but that also keeps us on our toes all the time. Uh, international markets, I think, are very partnership-led, yes, of course. Uh, India is still a little more agency mindset-driven. Uh, and that is changing also, is what we are seeing uh, in the market. And also, as these conversations are evolving, and programmatic now um, becoming a common norm for operating uh, digital marketing, more data-centric conversations emerging, more customer-centric uh, conversations emerging. Uh, the clients right now, how we operate with them, they're sparring with us in terms of concepts. Um, and they want to see how we challenge them versus how they challenge us. Earlier on, it would be the only one-sided thing, right? So that's changing very, very rapidly. Because it's no longer about just one stream that we're talking about. We're not only talking about media buying anymore. We are talking about how we are going to leverage or know our own audiences, then use the media planning um, you know, uh, tools that we put together, how we're going to operationalize it and roll it back into reporting. So it's no longer just you know, linear way of operations. We have to think uh, in multi-directions. And that's where I think one of the things which is very rapidly changing in the industry is uh, the ask from the partners to support the clients uh, in those aspects that, okay, can you bring together a little more holistic and rounded thinking about how should we go about these? Uh, because we also as clients, sorry, we don't know as much as you guys know, right? Yes. Because we are also learning and we are also trying to quickly evaluate what you can get us on the table yeah. and how we can implement it in our larger environment. I think that's something that we as advertisers look up to you guys yeah. to bring that change for us. And of course, you, you're right when you're saying it's very agency facing. But as clients, because right now most of us work for global you know, conglomerates and they, our counterparts across the world are able to do this in a partnership-led yeah. model. And I, I really think as an industry, you guys, I think a lot of your role is just educating us, just helping us find that right fit you know and that is majorly why i think you guys feel so challenged all the time <laughs> I, I don't know whether well, i should use well this word to say that we are sorry but that's the only hope we have <laughs> wow um so that's changing rapidly um and uh, uh, especially uh, like i said the ask is now not linear it's about uh, a partner who can um, help the clients out in their nuances like if i have to even talk about alco by West category uh, India is way more stringent in terms of advertising on Alcobev. You have to think about surrogate. You have to think about a lot more other channels because it's not mainstream. So you guys are, I would say, opposite side of spectrum, where Prasad deals with whole host of data, which is so critical and so PII driven, and there is so many guardrails around it. On the other side, you have no data to work with, or you have to harness data in very different manners, yes. right? So there are two different academies that we are seeing over here. The approach required for it, the methods required for it are very different, while the tools that we have accessible remain the same. Yeah, just, just for the benefit of the larger group, because I'm an alcohol marketer for almost eight, nine years, we advertise extensions in India, not surrogates anymore. Yes. So I'm just, just making sure that I'm doing my duty as Absolutely. an alcohol marketer. Yeah. So that's, that's what I would like to say. Yeah, no, and you know, it, uh, I remembered a funny incident. So we were speaking to a Singapore counterpart. They were saying, "Yeah, we are doing performance campaign for this advertiser." Okay, great. You know, and we are we are meeting the KPI. We are yeah, everything is going great. What's the KPI? Site visit. <laughs> and for us, it's the second bottle that is open and finished. <laughs> I, I said, "Okay, site visit." We're just landing on the page. Oh, okay, good. That's such a beautiful <laughs> world. <laughs> Um, great. So, uh, Jayati, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, programmatic, how do you see the future evolving, right? Uh, because 
there is there are so many new channels coming in uh, there is a lot of uh, you know focus on data and data science here things like cdp uh, also will play an important role so uh, cookie cookies are going away you know that's another big thing which is going to happen so how do you see programmatic landscape evolving from here see programmatic is here to stay and it's here to grow at a very rapid pace um, according to me where connected tvs today very soon will be hearing about digital out of homes I think the advancement of it is very, very fast. Uh, and I'm hoping that this newcomer of media will actually leverage, like you said, uh, and benefit out of the cookie-less depreciation in the future because their methodology of targeting audiences goes beyond it, uh, which I think will also create a center stage for contextual targeting. So it solves for two, three things which are very much in the near future. We've been hearing about cookie depreciation for the longest time and now advertisers are coming to us and even talking to us about how can I reach my users without and securing it from the future threat that they have. So understanding your audiences across whichever platforms they are is the most important. Uh, don't look at programmatic as just a way to buy, but look at it as a medium to solve for across. And with programmatic, I think it only empowers you more as a brand. Don't look at it just as it, be it branding or performance. It can solve for across. What's important is, I think, three new additions that we have to make. We already talk about right audience, and we always talk about uh, the KPIs. We need to now understand to create the right bidding strategy with the bidding budget and constantly keep measuring it. So just pay. You have to pay. It's a basic right of an advertiser to pay for the quality impression. So two, these two things, I think, will play a very critical role in the future of programmatic. I think I can chip in a little bit more over there. Um, as a company, as Media Monks, we did a survey when this topic was like super hot uh, last year. Uh, and of course, some certain key uh, platforms were, uh, had announced a release date or change date. Um, so we'd done a survey across uh, Asia Pacific uh, where we had 200 marketers participating in this survey, precisely asking that what are their concerns or for that matter, what is their readiness uh, for the privacy changes uh, that are going to hit the market, um, most of the, as in uh, most of the response, actually uh, concentrated on the fact that they don't feel they're ready, or they don't feel they're equipped with what should they do. What is a playbook for them to straddle across this change that's going to happen? How does it change marketing? The other part of it is from a marketer's perspective and. Uh, you know, consolidating all the responses, we realized that this is something, this is a phenomenon that's going to hit the most uh, in the performance marketing sector. Because there's no remarketing, there's no retargeting uh, as crazy as we do it today. We can't do it, uh, it's going to be a blind model. And that's what's going to propel, and that is propelling uh, a whole lot more brands to start thinking about how can we talk to our consumers directly. That's where D2C efforts are going up um, as we speak, and also data has taken the center stage while thinking about uh, digital advertising. So uh, from that standpoint, um, as in that's where I think the conversations go in. A whole, whole lot more, everyone went through and everyone is going through digital transformation of some sort in their organization. Everyone will become a transformer by the end of it. But <laughs> um, the good part of it is uh, all you need is a step-by-step -step approach, a partner who can guide you through that journey uh, and help you out with the ABCs of how do we go and we're not jumping the gun from being like absolutely nascent to thinking about doing something which is multi-moment and losing the entire hang of it. Because we do get a lot of clients and I'll be very, very open about this. We do get one line brief saying that I want CDP. And when we start asking questions about why do you need CDP, there are no answers. There's just a wish list uh, of saying, I want to start off a CDP. But there are a whole lot more steps one has to take before you can make a huge investment like a CDP. It's a, it's a principle, it's a concept that's going to run your entire company's audience-centric thinking. Uh, it needs a whole lot more homework before we come to a stage where we talk, talk about CDP. So yeah, sorry, that was a very big. I think that's true. I totally agree with it. Yeah. Be because as Alcobef companies, we've, we've told so many times that you need a CDP. Yeah. And we're like, OK, we can't sell directly. We can't do performance marketing. Why do I need it? And we've struggled. We've, we've done our collabs. We've struggled with it. And we've seen companies come out of it and go in it. 
but i think that clarity on why do you need it what's the purpose what's the purpose what's the role it's playing in your marketing and it's like people like you guys will who will actually come back and tell us because otherwise it becomes like i'm saying like the latest shiny thing i need to have it in my basket Sometimes you don't need a cdp you just need a few other tools that can exactly. help you reach yes uh, just one thing what i will add to this entire data thing uh, currently what is happening lot of data is available correct uh, which is uh, more about uh, the demographic data as well as uh, the data which is transaction data and this is the demographic and transaction data we end up doing the uh, targeting and core of programmatic platform is all about creating that segment and targeting to that particular segment but there are lot of um, uh, restrictions right now in programmatic which i believe should get resolved in future again from the data capturing perspective is the way the consumer wants to consume the content because in this entire programmatic platform the one thing which gets missed out is the communication that what communication to what type of customer and when so we have solved for uh, which customer we have solved for when to send the communication but what type of communication that information is quite limited for example we all have uh, different um, archetype correct we we all believe that uh, like for example when i look at any content i look for data into it is it fact based is it factual some uh, infographic into it because that's how i am that's how my uh, mindset is so if i receive the communication content which is opposite of it which is pure uh, 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 emotion based communication it might not appeal to me and though i am targeting the right audience i am targeting at the right time it's not going to yield me the right benefit right now or the roi right now because my communication is not appropriate to his content consumption pattern so next for programmatic for uh, this to flourish further because core is targeting segmentation i would like to have more variables around that particular part as well apart from uh, cdp cdp is more about what data i have the first party data and how do we use it uh, which is a better connected data ecosystem kind of a thing but something outside my ecosystem how do i create that for the consumption for marketing campaigns i think that's where the trend should change great that's actually uh, that's actually a very very good point that most marketers uh, well not marketers most of the times it's missed out in discussion which is communication the how and do we use all this data it's a basic data. ask no <laughs> it is but it's also it's a historic challenge in our industry yeah. because content way went its way and um, media buying digital everything became like a unit of its own but it's all coming back together that's what we stand for as well as media monks i think we spoil the market by saying that we'll find you that end one user <laughs> focus too much on that great uh, i think great discussion thanks a lot uh, i did not have to do a lot of work uh, you know <laughs> uh, with uh, you know a lot of initiative from panel members thanks a lot and uh, great thoughts thank you so much